And welcome to another edition of Puros Miners, bro. I'm Ando the Monster Medina, along with my tag team partner. As always, here he is. He is my man, Chris Gomez. Chris, what do you say, brother? How do you feel, bro? Feeling good, brother. I'm feel, feeling real good. Football in full effect, man. This is the first weekend that we had the, the league back in action. That's right. So, you know, f- football Thursday night, Friday night, um, That's right. Saturday, Saturday all day, college. And, um, you know, UTEP for the nightcap and then, you know, had a full slate of, of games and all the, Sunday long. So And then the Cowboys won as well. So that's a beautiful thing. I'm not so sure if the Jets fans are happy right now because currently they're losing as we are taping. Well, this is Monday, you know. So, uh, uh, so Chris, uh, of course, we're here. This is Puto's Miners, bro. Thank you so much for joining us here on EP Sports Network. Uh, so we've had a couple of days to digest what we saw. On Saturday, of course, we had the uh, instant re- uh, reaction video that we did. So now that you've had a couple of of, of days, like two days to think about, uh, Chris, what we saw on Saturday when the Utah Miners lost in overtime to Southern Utah, are there any other things that you that maybe any more bright spots you can think or any thoughts? To, you have two days later, like is there anything that can maybe make you feel better or whatever? Just give me your thoughts two days later of what, after what you saw. I I, w- I want to say that like bright spots are just what what the miners needed to clean up from what I saw on Saturday. It wasn't a lack of speed or talent. It's just mental errors. Like uh, and uh, Coach Walden uh, addressed them at, at the press conference right after. You know, just drills that they do to kind of get over the things like holding and you know th- those those silly little mistakes that were putting them behind the sticks the entire evening. You know, um, right after they scored those two seventy five yard drives right off the bat. You know, they they really slowed down and. Um, you know, like like it was a bunch of three and outs, um, you know, one four and out, one promising drive that ended up with a missed field goal. So, um, you know, that that really puts your defense in a bad spot. It flips field position when you can't move the sticks at least a little bit. And, um, you know, that Southern Utah was able to capitalize on that. But I, I don't really think it's a major overhaul needed or we should declare the season dead. You know, um, I, I mean, just being there in that atmosphere, first of all, you know, like like it's something I wish we could have like every game, you know, and and uh, watching Coach Walden come down with the pick and lead his team down from the mine shaft and everything. I, I'm not going to lie. I got goosebumps, like literal goosebumps. You know, it's infectious energy. And I, I think, um, you know, as as long as, um, you know, they, they keep working, um, you know, um, it's a work in progress and we just have to let Coach Walden cook. Yeah, I agree with you. And like I said, it is going to be a work in progress. Uh, I, I think a lot of fans are going to be frustrated with what they saw because uh, while the hype that was uh, built up to this uh, game, man, like I said, like uh, in a couple of minutes, we're going to play what we uh, we did uh, the hard count live from the Union Draft House earlier today. And I was able to ask uh, Coach Tony Hava and his brother what they thought of the situation. And you know, we'll we'll play that in a couple of seconds, but like, uh, and you'll see when we do the recap when we when we play that is that uh, I say that oh, the city will pass gives you one shot, and every year they give you one shot for the football team, and the problem is that of course they lost, but the the problem is what you pointed out last week, Chris, is that they don't play at home on a Saturday until November, which is what people are used to because you have the Thursday games or during the week and when October, and I'll be honest with you, I I don't like it. I don't like the whole playing during the week in October, like it really messes up the, the, the schedule and what you're used to, but it is what it is. But still, uh, I think this team should have rebound, but it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough to see um, how this team is going to respond because when you look uh, at, at these young men, I think that the, the main thing, the one person I want to see rebound the most is Flabiano because you kind of, you, you feel bad about that whole situation because like I said, when we we were like next to each other when when he kicked the field goal and he missed it and we didn't realize how bad he had missed it and it wasn't until when I saw a different version of the field goal that it was he, like he it was not even close to get uh, uh, in in the uprights so, so nonetheless I'm sure that they worked on that on practice I'm sure they uh, had a good talking to him I'm sure they had a good practice today uh, but nonetheless uh, we'll play here the go ahead Chris. Yeah, I, just, I kind of feel like the band jinxed them, to be honest with you, the, the halftime performance, because they, they did a little tribute to, um, you know, the Instagram site that we all know and love, FitFam, um, and, you know, spelled it out with a hashtag and everything, and they said, yeah. don't end up on FitFam. Damn. And so Buzz Flaviano ends up ended on FitFam. Up with bed. Okay, yeah, so here... So I, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, that was just a jinx. I feel like that was the yeah. jinx of it all. 
Well, uh, I thought everything changed in the, uh, and we talked about it on, on Saturday, but I thought everything changed right before the uh, end of the uh, first half. So here we're going to hear the, uh, I asked Coach, uh, I, I got into the whole segment with Coach Tony Alba and his brother uh, Gabe Rihaba as part of the uh, the uh, the show we did, uh, the hard count well, earlier today from the Union Draft House. So here's that part of Burroughs Miners, bro. The UT Miners lost this game because they had 50, 14 penalties, which is the most penalties they've ever had since, I believe, 2004, 2005. So, and coach, I don't care who you are. I don't care what level you're playing at. If you have 14, 15 penalties, most of them holding drive killers, personal fouls, you know, pass interference calls, you know, there's no way you're going to win this game. So, clearly, this team was very undisciplined right. when it came to. The penalties, and I be believe that cost them the game. And the problem is that this is a team that's learning. But the city of El Paso, they don't care. <laughs> they don't. they that's will right. promise something different, and it didn't happen. Yep. Like I said, everything has changed because everybody's new. But the result and the way the game ended was exactly the same. So now, right. gentlemen, give me your thoughts of what you saw on Saturday at the yeah. Sun Bowl. Go ahead. Give, 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 go first. Yeah. Um, you know, sadly, what you were saying earlier, it's true is that you get one chance. You know, you got 41,000 people going crazy. It, it was loud. It was loud out there. And uh, you have all people with all the hope, people like me, you know, for years, you yeah, know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it ends up being a, a disappointment. So going forward, you know, from a, from a fan standpoint, you know, I hope I hope people stick around and, you know, but that's going to be tough. As far as being, as far as the game itself, I think you're exactly right. They lost that momentum. You could see it changing before the half. And in the second half, um, Southern Utah, they started running the ball, could not, we could not stop them. And yep. it was like that snowball just kept yep. rolling down. See, because you, you expect Nebraska, once we're in Nebraska, realize, hey, we're bigger than these guys. We're just going to push them. Yeah. And they couldn't stop the run. Southern Utah was pushing the defense around too. So the, stopping the run is going to be their, their main focus. Right, right. And then offensively, uh, it, the second half they were stagnant. Yeah. They there was they they, you know, running a lot of same plays. There was no motion. There no. there was no movement no. in their offense. No. It, it was pretty stagnant, running similar type plays and with no success. But they kept doing it, yep. hoping that you know eventually it would it, it would you know break. Yeah. Uh, it, it, unfortunately, it didn't. And, and coach, that's one of the things we've talked about this style of, of offense that like if you don't click on first down if especially if you don't click on third down and second down all of a sudden you're in trouble on third down and next thing you know you're a three and out and that happened That's again right. for the second week in a row coach yeah, yeah and and you know i mean to me like like you all were saying it, it, that momentum changed right before halftime but i think the adjustments that were made at halftime mm -hmm. made a big difference coming out in the second half you could because southern utah had in their mind when they when they made those those uh, uh, those modifications, those changes, this is what we're going to do. We're going to run the ball. We're not we're not going to finesse anymore. We're going to power. And you know the, the the miners weren't ready for it. You know there's there's a couple of things. To, to me, it, it's it's just my my opinion. I I've always been under under the the impression that you know it's good to get hyped. You know it's good to be loud. It's good to jump around as players, but you know it expends energy. Yep. You know and. Uh, to me, uh, I, w I would, you know, my way of doing it, it ever since I, I was in ninth grade, you, you know, the, our, my, my kids would always get mad at me because I told them, once you come into the locker room to get dressed, turn the music off, turn everything off, your concentration is on what you're going to do on that field. Uh, that's just, that, that, was just my, that was just my feeling. And, and I think that, uh, you know, those penalties, most of those penalties, they become mental. They become mental because you're tired. Yep. They become mental because, you know, things are getting a little bit tougher. You know, and you, they just, you know, like my brother says, it just snowballs. Yep. And once you get that ball rolling, snowballing, you can't stop it. You know, I mean, I, I've been in those situations. You can't stop yep. it. You know? a, a lot of people, like when they, they talk about momentum, and I have, I talked to a bunch of coaches, like with you and all other high school football coaches, college coaches, they say that momentum is a real thing. It like is. you feel it, it like it when is. it changes. Yep. Uh, so, of course, after the game, being the stand-up guy that he, that he is, mm -hmm. Coach Scotty Walden didn't blame any of the players. Right. He said that the loss is on him. He's got to do a better job of coaching. But let me tell you, like, I'm on the sidelines. 
I saw them. They were they were getting on these uh, on the players. They were they were coaching them. They're they're doing their job. But at the end of the day, you know, at a certain point, we gotta we gotta hold the players accountable. And, and, and what church. he said during the post game interview is that he talked to the team. Was like, hey, last year I started zero two as well. We're now zero and two. So now we're gonna find out what type of team we exactly. we are. That's right. And we're gonna right. we're gonna we're gonna find out as a city. What type of team the UTEP, this UTEP minor squad is going to be, yep. whether they're going to fold or they're going to uh, prevail with this adversity that yes. they're facing. And they're going to be facing a lot of adversity those next two weeks because you're going to travel to Liberty, which, by the way, NMSU should have been Liberty, so that means yeah. Liberty is going to be upset. You know, and right now, the minors can't stop the run. They're just going to run on UTEP, so they're going to have to figure that out. Right. And then you're going to travel to Colorado State. You know, yeah. Colorado State's going to do the same thing. Yeah. And the reason why we talk about the El Paso gives you one shot is because a lot of people don't realize, gentlemen, I don't know if you realize this, but we're used to going to see UTEP minors play on Saturdays. Right. This past Saturday was the only Saturday okay. game yeah. until the month of no. November. Mm. Right. First week in November is when they're back because once it hits October, they got the deal with the oh, with the ESPN. Uh, they got they got a Thursday, you got a Wednesday, you got a Tuesday. So until November, yeah. crazy, right, and yes. I think that's why the attendance might be lower. So that's why I say you give them one shot. So, um, yeah. and there you have, it, folks. That was that was earlier uh, today for the hard count live. We'll be live again on Monday from the I believe it's going to be the East Lake Union Draft House. So looking forward to that. I know, Chris, you're busy, but I know, like you said, you're going to be able to come to one of them uh, in the near future. Uh, so before we get to talk about Liberty, I want to congratulate UTEP volleyball coach, just put those minors, bro. We're talking about minor stuff. Ben Wallace just got extended for another two years. Uh, another great coach that the UTEP minors have and uh, great success. Uh, the volleyball team this past weekend did a tremendous job, you know, uh, playing here at home at Memorial Gym. So, Chris, your thoughts? on Ben Wallace getting extended for another two years for the minors. I mean, I've, I've had the, um, you know, the privilege of being able to get to a volleyball game. And one thing that I'll say under Ben Wallace is, um, you know, Memorial gym, when that place is rocking, you know, I mean, th th that's a great atmosphere and I think it's really underrated. And I mean, it, it's a hot ticket. We saw last year in the tournament, you know, they, the, they were able to get to the, 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 uh, um, get to the final there, you know, they fell a little short, but I mean, there's nobody more deserving. You know what you're what you're seeing here, like you know, with Ben Wallace and um, you know Joe Golding and Scotty Walden yep. is um, UTEP has a new type. You know, we used to have a, a an, an old type. We've got a yeah. new type of coach, and <laughs> you know, they, it's coaches that bring the high energy. Yep. And and I mean, like like it's it's a really nice change. Like I, I really enjoy it. You know, and and um, you know, they're they're all kind of intertwined. And and what I like about it is they all show up to each other's events too. You know, um, um, those, those three and and you know they they beat up of each other so you know and and just i mean what the volleyball team's been able to do you know some early season success they're setting the tone and and you know i i think um it's gonna be another great year at memorial gym and um as long as we can keep coach wallace around you know and keep him happy and and um, i i think um you know it, it'll be a matter of time before we're we're in the ncaa tournament there with the volleyball team and you know you'll see the sport uh, um here locally grow around it too Yep, and it's only going to get better, and they're averaging at least the last three years over 22 victories per season, which honestly we haven't seen in a very long time for the UTEP minor volleyball team. So congratulations to Ben Wallace. And like you said, overall, just a good guy, you know, great guy. When you get a chance to hang out with him, talk to him, uh, uh, we had the opportunity to have him live when we were doing the show from Showtime. And uh, just a great guy and great to see that he has stayed here in El Paso, keeping his services here for at least another two years. So uh, we wish them nothing but the best of luck there. And you brought up basketball. It's hard to believe we're in September, you know, basketball starts in November. So we're going to have to start talking about basketball here in about three weeks, boys and men and women's basketball for the UTEP minors. But we're going to talk UTEP minor football because that's why we're here as well. So I think we've talked enough about the game and what happened and the disappointments and things of that nature. So, Let's break down this game that they're going to take on Liberty. And uh, the first thing I'm going to say is that Pobrecito, the New Mexico, the Mexico Aggies, they they had Liberty. They had Liberty. I mean, when you and I were there at the, the UTEP game, people were giving us updates that, hey, NMSU might pull off this. Uh, actually, I think it was Ace or Christian because they were there. And they're like, hey, they might pull off this upset. And uh, unfortunately, they did not. They didn't, they didn't. They weren't able to finish. So... 
UTEP now is facing a Liberty team, Chris, who, of course, you know, every team makes change, but, of course, Liberty was is picked to be one of the favorites to win the conference, and now they got embarrassed because they almost lost, so now they're going to be at home, home cooking. And just to give you a sample of what the travel is going to be like, Chris, we are slated to take off about 9 a.m. to go to uh, to, to Virginia. It's going to be a long flight non-stop flight you know and then um it's gonna be a long flight back so it's gonna be a long day of travel uh to go over there to play at liberty and i'm sure that's why we're leaving early so the players can get used to it i think we fly like at 9 a.m and then so they can get used to it but at the end of the day like they're gonna face a very motivated liberty team and i'm telling you right now chris if if the UTEP minor defense can't find a way to stop the run it's gonna be a long long night for the UTEP Miners against the Liberty Flames. Your thoughts? Yeah, well, I, I mean, um, Caden Slater, their, their quarterback, you know, he's he's returning. I mean, they, uh, we saw what he did last year in the Sun Bowl. Um, you know, he, he's one of the best in Conference USA, and, and uh, um, you know, he, he'll break contain um, just like um, Southern Utah did, you know. If they, but, but the good part is New Mexico State kind of put down the blueprint on how to stop them defensively. You know, they held them for about three and a half quarters you know, hats off to the Aggies for a good game plan and Coach Sanchez out there. But I um, mean, you know, the blueprints there now, and yep. you know, can can um, Walden and his staff um, take that 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 blueprint and and you know, add off it. It's always a tough ask going to the East Coast, losing those those two hours. Um, you know, uh, um, being in their stadium, and that that stadium is is one of the um, top attended in, in Conference USA. They've got a nationwide following. They've got all the yep. research um, sources. Coach um, Jamie Chad Chadwell runs it like a Power Five program, so I, yep. I mean, basically, you're going in, uh, up against the best of the best in their home stadium and the Group of Five. Yeah, and when you say that they're well funded, that is an understatement, my friend. There's only other one other school that I know that they have their buses drive all the way wherever they're playing, so they can take them from the uh, from the airport to the stadium. And Alabama and Liberty's got that. Those buses were over there at NMSU. It's just crazy, you know. But still, uh, and of course, uh, maybe a little minus, a little bit more of motivational stuff. Remember what happened here at the Sumble last year, where they had the a little yeah. uh, pinata, pinata the gate. reminders, pinata gate. So, uh, uh, but at the end of the day. Mariachi Gate, yeah. At the end of the day, the miners got to find a way, you know, to move that football offensively. Like, if, if that offense is, and let's be honest, like, it, we saw it click in the first uh, quarter and a half, and it wasn't until the last drive of the game that that, that offense started clicking again. But if they don't fix up those turn, there's, uh, those, uh, those penalties, Chris, it's going to be a long night because, I mean, like, those are just momentum killers, drive killers. Uh, but at the same time, that offense needs to, like, start to click and be consistent and click the entire game because without that it's going to be a very long night do, do you know what the spread is right now i haven't even checked let me look yeah, let me right now as the, we speak hold on let's see what the spread Give is of course uh, they should have put it up already um let's see the matchup predictor has 23 and a half i see 23 I see. and a half with 82.6 percent yeah of a chance going to liberty so yeah that that's what they they think but i mean look at um northern illinois was a 28 yep. point dog at, at notre dame you know in, in south bend so anything can happen that's why they play the game nmsu was i think 26 and a half point underdogs against liberty like you said but yeah let's see hopefully this is a game that the miners step up and are very competitive and maybe you never know maybe shock everybody that would be great that would be a great rebound for everybody involved especially here in the city of el paso get that faith back in the team but like i said it's it's a young team they're they're learning and they learned a lot on that they like it's like we talked about it when we did the, the live instant replay we went through the whole gamut of 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 emotions and if we went through it just imagine what the players went through so i'm sure it's been a tough couple of days for this utep minor squad but at the end of the day we're gonna we're gonna find out which type of team, as as Coach Walden said in the uh, the post game press conference there, Chris. We're gonna find out what type of minor team we're gonna we're gonna have for the rest of the season. Either they're gonna fold or they're gonna step up. So hopefully it'll be the latter where they they uh, step up and show everybody that hey we're here to fight. I mean that's for me that's the best case scenario. Yeah, absolutely, uh, for sure. You know we're gonna find out you know how how good um, 
Co Coach Walden and his staff is at keeping the, the team motivated. He did mention in the press conference that, um, you know, last year his team at Austin PA also started 0-2 and, and they rebounded to win the conference. So, you know, and anything's possible. You know, we've got a 4 p.m. kickoff. Uh, I think it'll be 6 p.m. for you guys, right, when you're out yes. there? Yes. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> and by the way, I'm going to be at the stadium since 8.30. I mean, it is what it is, brother. <laughs> you, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's going to be. Like I said, I'm looking forward to a hostile environment, you know, because it sits and like you said, it, it's beautifully, beautifully built. I think it only seats like 20 some thousand. I think I'm not sure the stadium, but it's it's jam packed, you know, uh, kind of like the way FIU. FIU is a small a stadium, but it's, it's so compact that it, it makes sense and it's very loud. So uh, I'm looking forward to a, a good game and hopefully we'll find out what this UT minor team is uh, made of because I'm sure. They've been embarrassed over the last couple of days over what transpired at the Sun Bowl. Uh, they want to make good for the city. And like I said, well, I'm sure the co I guarantee the coaching staff is upset and embarrassed with what happened. So we'll find out what type of uh, game we see on Saturday. And, of course, we hope for the best. And hopefully the Miners come up with a, a big victory and upset a lot of people. And hopefully we're here a week from today talking about how the miners got a big victory and if they didn't you know hopefully it's a situation like hey they were super close and they made a lot of improvements in different aspects of the game well like i said little by little uh they're getting better every week that's going to be it for me chris you got anything else to add brother before we wrap it up no that's it just uh, have a safe trip out there to virginia you know you always represent the sun city the 915 really, really well wherever you go and you know i, I know you'll do uh, awesome out there and you know listen looking forward to Hearing you on 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 the, on the broadcast, like always, giving us I, that sideline insight. I appreciate you, brother. So for Chris Gomez, I'm out of the Monster Media. Thanks so much for joining us on another episode of Puro's Miners, bro.